In VR, how can we stop the players from cheating and even passing through walls when poking their head through our 3D models? In this video, I'm going to show you two ways to fix this issue, which will also show you some cool ways to handle physics in Unity. But first, this video is sponsored by me. That's right, you heard that correctly, because we've just released our first Unity tools on the Asset Store, the Auto VR Optimizer, a tool for VR developers just like you that can analyze your project with a single click and give you tips to optimize it for VR. You can grab it on the Asset Store for $14.99 or get a special deal by joining us on Patreon for $10. Alright, hope you guys are ready and without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so the first way to stop the player from poking their head through 3D Mesh is by using Unity Physics, basically adding a physics body to your VR player, like a capsule collider with a rigid body that follows the player's position and adjusts its height based on the player's head. And look at this, here is the result. Now, I've shared all the steps to create this setup in my previous tutorial, full body physics in VR Unity Bone Work Bone Lab tutorial, so go check that out if you want to see the full implementation, but Maybe you don't want to use the physics in your game. And that's why we are moving to our second solution, the head overlap fading. Okay, so here we are in Unity, in the demo scene from the Unity XR Interaction Toolkit. And the idea behind this second technique is very simple. I want to fade out the player's head when it enters a mesh. So let me show you how exactly we can achieve this. The first step is to go under the main camera here on your XR rig. And then I'm going to right click, go to 3D object, and then go to quad. Once that's down, we can remove the mesh collider because we don't actually need it. And here we can remove this quad to overlap fading. There you go. Next, as you can see, the camera cannot see here the quad. This is because if we go to the main camera, the near plane is at 0 0.01, which means that anything below this value will not be rendered. So we actually need to increase here the Z value to 0 0.01 and maybe add just a little bit of value like 0 0.1. And there you go. As you can see, it now renders directly on the main camera view. Next, let's change the material of this quad by right clicking, going to create, then to material. And I'm going to call this one black fade. There you go. Now on the shader, we can change the shader to the URP unlit. Beautiful. And now the surface type, I want it to be transparent and to change the color to black. Basically, what I'm just doing is creating a fading material that I will be able to control with a script. Now we can drag this black fade material on the quad. And now here, as you can see, we can change the color value and change here the alpha value of the material to fade the screen. Now, something you can do is also select here the overlap fading and just press on R and increase the size a little bit to make sure that everything will be covered and that the camera will not be able to see the side here. But now that we've created a quad to fade out the screen of the player, how can we actually enable the fading when the players poke his head through a mesh? So to do this, let me show you how we can do this. We are going to click back on the overlap fading. And here I'm going to click on add component and create a new script called overlap fading. There you go. Okay, so first in the script, I'm going to need two reference. First is of course a reference to the player head. And the second one is a public float, which will be a sphere radius that we can initialize to 0 0.3. Now, the idea is that we are going to use this value here to check if there is a collision between the player head and our environment. To check this collision, we can go here on the update function. And to do this, I'm going to do collider array it colliders equals physics dot overlap sphere. And here give us a parameters, our head dot position and our sphere radius. Basically, what this line will do is return all of the collider that are being hit by a sphere that is centered on the head dot position and that has sphere radius. There you go. And now if it colliders dot length is greater than zero, it means that we have hit something. And if not, it means that we have not hit something. And in this case, we will be able to control the fade of our screen. So to do this, I'm going to go down below and create a function called public void apply fade, which will take a parameter called float alpha as an input. And basically on this function, what we want to do is change the color of the quad material that we just created. So to do this, I'm going to go add the top and add two reference. The first one will be a reference to our renderer, which I will call renderer. And finally, the second parameter will be the color property that we want to change and that we can actually initialize to base color. I think that's actually the color used in the URP shader, so that's why. Now, if we go down below, 
and to apply here the fade, we can do color, color equals renderer dot material dot get color and here use our color property as a parameter. Now that we get the color, we can actually change the alpha value of the color to be the new alpha value that we want. And then we can simply set back the value of the color to be color and here use the color property as our second parameters. Oh, and I actually forgot that it's the opposite. We first need to write the property and then the value like so. Okay, beautiful. And something else that I really want to do is that we can actually enable here the renderer only if the alpha value is greater than zero. This will make sure that if the alpha value is equal to zero, it will actually disable the mesh renderer, which will be a bit more optimized. Okay, so now at that point, what we can do is that if we hit something, we can simply do apply fade and here give a value of one which will add no transparency to the fading. And if we didn't hit anything, we can do apply fade zero. There we go. Now let's save and go back to Unity. Perfect. For the head, we can drag here the main camera. For the sphere radius, let's leave it to 0 0.3. And for the mesh renderer, let's drag here the mesh renderer on the overlap fading right here. And there you go. Now this color should be the correct name that we have here on this shader. But otherwise, you can simply click on the three little dot, go to select shader. And here you can have a look at the property name on the shader. And as you can see, indeed, the base color is the correct name for the color of this shader. So everything seems to be good. Now what we can do is click on play to find out if this works. Okay, and here you go. If we click on play, as you can see, the quad is completely black, but this is completely normal. This is because the head is colliding with the hand of the player. And you can actually see that if we change the sphere radius to zero, as you can see, it, it removed the collision and it changed the fading value. So to fix this issue, what we can actually do is add a layer mask to our overlap fading script. So to do this, let's go at the top and here add a public layer mask component called collision layer there you go and here after the overlap sphere we can give as a third parameter the collision layer right there now if we say go back to unity there you go now at the top on the layer we can click there and click on add layer and call this one environment beautiful now if we go back to the overlap fitting we can set the collision layer to only be environment this way our overlap sphere will only work with this layer mask. And then we can select all of the elements that we want to apply this fitting. For example, if I select this wall and here this table, there you go, I can select them all. And here at the top, change the layer to environment. Beautiful. Now let's click on play to find out if this works a bit better. Okay, here we go. As you can see on the bottom here, I have no fitting happening. But if I try to move the player near the wall, as you can see, it works. Now, if my player poke is head through the wall, the entire screen turns black, which is really cool. And now the player cannot cheat and can see the inside of the mesh. But I think that this fitting is a bit too direct. So there is actually a better way to do this and to make a smooth fitting happens depending on the penetration of the head through the wall collider. So let me show you how we can actually do this to also notify the player that we are currently fitting the screen based on the distance between his head and the colliders. So let's leave play mode and let's go back to our script. Okay, so the technique will be to actually compute the distance between the head and all of the colliders. To do this, we are going to create a new script called public float compute closest distance. Beautiful. Now the script will take as a parameter a collider array that I can call colliders with an S. And what we can do is actually create the closest distance that we can initialize to float that max value. And we can actually return at the end the closest distance. But what happens between these two? Well, we are going to loop between all of these colliders by doing for each var call in colliders. There you go. And now we are going to compute the distance between the head and the colliders and actually get the shortest distance between all of the colliders that we are going to return here at the end. To do this, let's do vector three, closest point, and do call dot closest point, and here give our head dot position. Now, as the name suggests, the closest point here on the collider will return the closest point on or inside the colliders from the head dot position. 
then once we get this point, we can actually get the distance with vector3 dot distance between the closest point and our head dot position. Beautiful. And now what we can do is simply set the closest distance to be the minimal value between the closest distance and the new distance that we have computed. And there you go, that's basically it. This function will make sure to return the shortest distance between all the colliders and the player's head. Now what's left is to simply compute this distance with float closest distance equals compute closest distance and here give our eight colliders that we just computed above with the overlap sphere. And in this case, we can get the target alpha by doing mathf.inverseLur sphere radius zero closest distance. Now basically here, the inverse lerp will give you the percent of where the closest distance is between sphere radius and zero. Now let me draw quickly a sphere. If this is the player's head right there, the center position of his head, and this is the sphere radius. Depending on the closest distance that we get, we are going to change the target alpha. If the closest distance is at the edge of the sphere radius, the target alpha will be zero. If it's near the center, it will be set to one. But what we can do is actually fade the screen a bit earlier, basically before the player had touched the colliders. And to do this, I'm going to create here a new variable called public float fade and distance that we can actually set maybe to 0 0.05 centimeters. And then instead of zero, we can use this property over there with fade and distance. Beautiful. Now, depending on where we are on the current distance between the colliders and the player's head, we are returning here a value between zero and one, depending on if this distance is closer to the sphere radius or to the fade and distance. And now we can actually apply this value on the quad material. So now let's save and go back to Unity to find out how this looks. There you go, now everything is already set up. So the last thing we need to do is actually click on play. And there you go guys, now if I poke my head through any environment, like the walls or the table over there, as you can see, the screen fades to black, but it doesn't fade just directly. The fading appears smoothly, which turned out really great because it also gives to the player the information that he's doing something that he shouldn't do. And there you go, this is how you can actually prevent your player from cheating by poking their head through your colliders. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe down below. A big shout out to the sponsor of today's video, which is myself. So if you want to support the channel, go check out our first asset, the Auto VR Optimizer on the Asset Store or by joining us on Patreon. Thank you for watching and see you soon. Bye bye.